for me, it's just about the emotional experience. How does it feel? How does it vibrate through my hands? How does the chassis tense up when it goes around a corner? How far can you push it before it starts to over or understeer? Those are the things that I'm constantly looking for. My name is Alexander Bermudez, and I drive the Growler. The Growler is a 1990s 964 that's um, been hot rodded. It has uh, a massaged engine, much more modern uh, Euro RS suspension. Uh, it's got 400 pounds taken out of it. The funny thing about this car is I wasn't intending on buying it at all. It actually used to belong to a very good friend of mine and he said to me, hey, you know, I've got this car, I'm thinking about getting rid of it and I think it'll be a perfect car for you. And I was somewhat skeptical. I took it for a spin and it was actually the first air-cooled car that I'd ever driven and it just changed my world. From that point on, I was a different person. kind of bridges the gap between the old and the new. Because it's so light, it has the speed and the acceleration that you typically find in the newer uh, water-cooled cars. And yet, because it's slightly older and it has automatic steering taken out of it, it has really good steering feel that is typically what you find in the older cars. The Growler is a pretty interesting blend. It's not too raw, but when you need it to give you the feedback that you would typically get from a raw car, it gives it to you, and it gives it to you in spades. The closer you get to the edge, it becomes more comfortable because it's telling you exactly what's going on. As a photographer, I'm constantly looking for locations to shoot cars. That takes a, quite a lot of time to find the right place and I use this car to go and find those places. The shooting is not what I find most enjoyable about shooting cars. It's the driving of them. I'm very privileged because I get to drive these cars for long periods of time. And in that time, I use them for everything. I'll take it to the grocery store. It's not uncommon that I'll put two, 3,000 miles on a car. So by the time I'm handing the car back, I have a very intimate understanding of how it drives and, and what it does and what it's good at and what it's not so good at. It's one of the reasons why I enjoy doing this so much is that I am looking for the perfect car. I believe that I have something that's fairly close and I'm constantly searching for something better. I'm a POC member and a PCA member. I race with both of them. Both clubs have turned me into a far better driver than when I first started doing this. My racing experience started about four years ago where I took my 997 out to the track and actually Magnus Walker was my first instructor. We spent a great day together and I promptly realized that that car was way too nice to fling around a track. The result of which was that I bought a Boxster that I then decided that I would race. That car was slowly developed into what's called the Boxster Spec Series, which I race with POC. Racing and photography are complete opposites. The reason is because racing is fundamentally destructive. Even if you don't touch anything on the track, you are essentially destroying the car. Every part of it is wearing out at a very quick rate. 
you're driving the carb outside of the envelope that it was designed to do. And as a result, its lifespan is very short. Photography is like therapy for the destruction of racing. And I think for me, it's very important to do both. I've been extremely lucky in all the things that I do because they have been challenging, interesting, and they all have room for my personal development, which as far as I'm concerned is the most important part of this whole project. Thank <laughs> you.